Hi, I'm Victoria Gallagher from HipTalk.com, and today we're going to talk about how hypnosis feels. If you've ever been in hypnosis, um, you know the feeling very well. It almost feels like you are drifting off to sleep, and then suddenly your body begins to ascend, and you drift up all the way to the heavens out into the universe and then you hear a sound inside your head that goes something like you have reached a deep state of hypnosis and so i'm sure that you understand that i'm joking people are expecting some sort of profound state um, that, that tells them that I know that I have reached hypnosis. How do you think that hypnosis should feel? A lot of people have these preconceived ideas about how they think that hypnosis feels. And so you're holding this idea in your imagination of some state that you're going to reach. And if you do not reach that state that you've held in your imagination and your preconception of what it should be like, then automatically you think, I haven't been hypnotized. Well, the first thing to understand is that hypnosis doesn't feel like anything that you haven't ever experienced before. Let me say that again. You've already experienced what it feels like to be in hypnosis. You just didn't know that that was a state of hypnosis. Another thing to understand about how hypnosis feels is it feels different for everyone. Everyone has a unique way of experiencing hypnosis, so it feels different for everyone. How hypnosis feels for you is completely different from how it feels for me. And then at another thing to understand about it is that it feels different for you on different days or different um, times, uh, different uh, areas of your life that you're working on. It can feel different. Here are a couple very common states that you enter into throughout each day that feel very much like hypnosis feels frequently. And that is when you're first waking up in the morning, when you're very first waking up in the morning. And you know how you're able to recall some of the, the dreams that you had? Only in those first few moments, but if you don't think of it or write it down or acknowledge it in some way or give it any kind of recognition, then if you were to try to recall what you dreamt later on in the day, uh, when you're in you know, kind of more of a, a con conscious state, we'll, we'll call it, um, if you try to recall it then, you're not gonna be as in touch with that. So you're about the closest to that feeling of hypnosis when you're very first waking up in the morning. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I can't be hypnotized. People have tried to hypnotize me and I just can't be hypnotized. Everyone has the ability to be hypnotized. The, the more true thing is, is that you just don't know what it is and you're uh, trying to achieve some state that really doesn't exist, or at least it, it, it doesn't exist for you. You're not going to be able to achieve the state that you are thinking that it should be. And how you feel when you're going into this other state, the state that we call hypnosis, that is the state of waking up and becoming aware. But that really is more what I like to consider the state of hypnosis. Um, putting that another way, it's like waking up from a dream or a nightmare, whichever way that you wanna call your life. Um, hypnosis is really a very aware state. Um, you become conscious, you become aware, you become awake. Uh, you, be, you become sort of in touch with the possibilities uh, that are within you. How you know that you're in hypnosis is because there are these three parts of your mind. There's your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, and your critical factor, okay? The critical factor is the part of you that criticizes the information that is 
coming in. So when you tell yourself, I am an amazing person, I can accomplish anything, or I am on my way to having the most wonderful body, or I am creating a wonderful relationship, or whatever that is that you might be wanting to create. And then you hear this other little voice in your head that says, no, 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 you can't do it. Nobody else has ever been able to do that before. It's hard. All of those little critiques. That's what's called your critical factor. So when people talk about in hypnosis, you go to sleep, you don't go to sleep promise you, you don't go to sleep. If you go to sleep, nothing's going to happen. You're going to go to sleep. You're going to go have a dream and all of the wonderful suggestions that I've been giving you or anybody else has been giving you, those have no meaning to your subconscious mind. You have to be able to have some kind of a, a feeling and some kind of an image, you know, that you hear, see, feel that you're in touch with. Those things have to happen. The words, don't have as much meaning to your subconscious mind when you're asleep. Um, and when you're asleep, you are not in the state of mind that is receptive to suggestions. If you consider the fact that hypnosis is just simply heightening your state of receptivity to suggestions, okay, how does that feel? It doesn't really feel like anything. It just means that you're accepting and allowing suggestions to get into the part of your brain which can make changes for you, your subconscious mind. I could say it 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, it doesn't seem to matter. You will hear every word I say when you're in hypnosis, okay? Now, I don't think I've been hypnotized. Why? Because I heard every word you said. You will hear every word I say, okay? Repeat that. You will hear every word I say. So hypnosis doesn't really feel like anything. When you're falling in love, okay, um, you are very receptive to suggestions, aren't you? Um, it just kind of depends on who's giving them to you. The other time that you are in hypnosis is, and you know, kind of close to love, but um, not exactly love. Um, it's that euphoric feeling when you are having sex or when you're having an orgasm. Those are some times that you are very receptive to suggestion. If you were to kind of stumble and then somebody was to say something to you in that very split moment, you would uh, take that into your subconscious mind as a suggestion. Relaxation is not synonymous with, um, with, uh, with hypnosis, all right? Now, relaxation is an approach to getting you into hypnosis. Why is that? Because of the way that your brain works. You go through, when you're wide awake, you're in a state of beta, high-speed uh, brain waves. Um, and each time when your brain waves slow down, go through the alpha, go through the, the theta, and then go into delta. Delta is sleep. Theta is uh, one of the better states that you can be in. It's also a, a, a state of receiving suggest, uh, suggestions. But when you go to delta, that's not a good place for learning. It's been proven that alpha and theta, these are the brainwave frequencies that are most um, receptive to suggestions. So that's why we take you into a state of relaxation. Relaxation doesn't mean hypnosis. Hypnosis does not mean relaxation. You can be wide awake and completely in hypnosis. You can be asleep and that's asleep and that's not hypnosis. Typically uh, some signs that you will experience um, by going into hypnosis. These are some signs, all right? And these these signs don't mean that you are in hypnosis and not be, having these signs doesn't mean that you're not in hypnosis, okay? Hypnosis is kind of like, you know, you, you have fleeting moments of um, going in and out of it. And, um, you, you know, you, you may not be in a constant state of hypnosis. The best way to experience it, the best way is just to allow yourself to be completely 
focused. I mean, I mean devote 100% of your conscious awareness to what is being said and allow that to be the dream that you're dreaming in that, in that moment. And using your vivid imagination and using your visualization and feeling and just evoke as many senses as you possibly can. And that will ensure your success with going into hypnosis. The sensations that you might experience, you might notice a change in your breathing. You might notice that your breathing slows down. You might notice a change in your temperature. Some people get cool, some people get warm. You might notice a tingling sensation in your limbs, um, in your hands you might notice first, or in your feet. You may notice this tingling sensation. Some people feel that uh, they are getting so heavy that they are sinking into the chair or into the bed. Some people have a sensation of floating, like they're you know moving up out of their out of their body. Um, you know, some people get uh, heightened states of clarity, um, or they might get heightened emotional states. These are all fine um, to notice when you notice them. And it's just really just to give you a gauge. It's not to say, yes, I am now in hypnosis. Nobody's gonna say that to you. Nobody's gonna confirm that for you. But what is going to happen is that as you turn hypnosis into a daily practice in your life, all right, it is a practice. It's like meditation in some ways where you, you get better at bringing yourself into that state the more often you do it. And you can bring yourself there. You bring yourself there whether you're with a hypnotist or not because you are the one that has to do it. The hypnotist can just give you suggestions, but you have to allow yourself to go along with the suggestions that they are giving to you. It's not magic. Um, it is actually a practice. It is something that some people are naturally better at the first time. That kind of gives you a little bit of an understanding um, about how hypnosis feels and about just some misconceptions that people have about whether they've been hypnotized or if they're going into hypnosis or not going into hypnosis. Um, watch this video over and over again until you really feel like you understand what hypnosis is. I'm Victoria Gallagher from hiptalk.com, wishing you a wonderfully hypnotic day.